Sir. So today I would like to show you a little bit uh, how Salesforce works, what it is, and uh, give you more like be better picture uh, what to do with this and what we can do. A little bit about me. Uh, I joined Salesforce uh, in June 2019. Uh, I was certified as Salesforce architect. Also, I have a certification for uh, developing me medical and healthcare um, devices. Uh, these certificates, I even don't want to pronounce it. Uh, at the same time, I have experience, like real experience in Java, Kotlin, and other uh, languages that you see. I play paintball. Uh, I played on uh, Europe Championship and World Championship, and I don't miss any Ukrainian championships. A uh, year ago, before we had the quarantine, I organized a software team building, uh, not team building, like a paintball for software, paint Salesforce software paintball cup. Uh, hopefully, uh, this coronavirus times uh, end up soon and we will be able to uh, organize it one, one more time. Uh, by the way, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to interrupt me and ask everything that you want and uh, don't be shy. Uh, today's agenda, I would like to talk a little bit about Salesforce today and Salesforce like, Global and Salesforce in SoftServe. So a little bit about Salesforce history that can give you some hints and a little bit on understanding about solutions that they came out with. How to program in, in Apex, overview of some IDE, uh, interactions with database, our UI, and security model of Salesforce. Uh, a little bit about Salesforce in SoftServe. Today, we have a team like 50 people, and we really grow this year. Uh, it more than two times grow revenue comparing with last year. Uh, that happened because we won like three or four um, pre sales in a row, and now we have more than 20 open vacancies. We have uh, uh, we have started architecture uh, architecture and pub program for some uh, tech leads and also for one Java architect. And also uh, we uh, run uh, academy in Ivano Frankivsk and Lviv in order to obtain new people and train new resources. Uh, our focus is to go from so-called body leasing uh, strategy to service strategy where we offer whole solution and end-to-end -end, uh, product support. Uh, we are on the way of doing this. We have currently two projects that we really doing like off uh, service level quality and uh, that's oil and gas distribution uh, in USA with monitoring trucks, tanks, uh, gas stations, navigation uh, to different points, uh, logistic, uh, controlling oil level in truck, uh, temperature, damages, all such type of stuff is pretty awesome. And uh, another project that like, service level is in us is in our company is uh, real estate uh, one of very 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 big uh, real estate uh, customer uh, joined to us and we do really really great job uh, like advising offering etc etc uh, we have few products uh, I don't want to enumerate uh, all of them because it I'm pretty sure would give you nothing. What does it mean? So let's move on. 
uh, except of Salesforce grows in SoftServe, Salesforce grows in the world. That's literally the biggest, the most expensive, the best CRM in the world. Uh, that's like numbers of 2016, but uh, probably, yeah, that's uh, numbers 2020 and chart really grows uh, and a lot of companies found that they were not ready to such critical situations like corona times and they started investing money into IT infrastructure and often Salesforce is really a best choice for them to get a lot of stuff like right, literally out of the box with some configuration you can really get real benefits uh, for business and operations in your company ah okay that's the numbers of 2020 and prediction for 2021 as you see um, it just grows like linearly but grows and nothing uh, bad happens that's all products that salesforce has uh, we have out of the box mobile application service cloud kind of set of tools uh, for organizing cases ticket management assignments flows uh, such awesome tricks like email to case if you ever used our uh, software help desk that's basically idea of service cloud but just it's embedded in uh, salesforce uh, infrastructure uh, marketing that kind of really advanced stuff uh, we unfortunately don't have marketing specialists in software and as i know in ukraine there is no marketing salesforce specialist so that's pretty interesting place where we can grow community that's a possibility to create kind of external site for uh, and customers for b2c or b2b solutions uh, like self-ordering self-service news uh, social media uh, any kind of analytics everything that uh, like business can imagine like like an example where we use community in uh, our projects is uh, oil and gas ordering oil and gas service for example some delivery was not on in time uh, some orders you want to track where a truck is is it on the way or maybe it was crashed or suddenly oil finished right a lot a lot of really powerful tools for analytics and uh, also it includes kind of artificial intelligent platform services as Einstein to predict your sales activities revenue and a lot a lot of stuff like this salesforce has own marketplace that's actually first in the world uh, uh, marketplace for uh, enterprise companies uh, i will talk a little bit more about this we have few solutions for commerce uh, like commerce cloud previously it was named demandware and salesforce just literally bought it um, and also we have solution for internet of things that's something that i'm doing if you can see me from my camera that's a device that i was able to connect to salesforce and detect kind of fire and other stuff that i did uh, this kind of small computer that can uh, do some simple issues it's a simple stuff and send events to salesforce uh, that probably will be uh, my next presentation how to do this and uh, what is the best ways to do this also as far as i know nobody in ukraine still did this um, a lot of data services crm email services calendars integrations with outlook gmail 
um, supported to form authentication own uh, authentication provider like similar to Duo but uh, self called so called Salesforce authenticator and also it compatible with this Duo for sure and a lot a lot a lot of other stuff. Uh, Again, guys, please don't be so shy. I would like to have kind of communication and uh, do not have a monologue. Okay, a little bit about Salesforce ecosystem and its evolution. It was launched in 1999. That was more than 20 years ago by former Oracle executive Mark Binyov. You can see his lovely face on the top and they had pretty uh, outstanding ideas like you have everything configured no access to servers file system everything should be handled via support or other declarative tools and uh, like idea that, that kind one of the first clouds when um, everything should be covered by Salesforce itself. And first, the uh, approach was that everything can be done with declarative tools like workflows, validation rules, different formulas. Uh, you were able to add some fields. And um, here we have like two types of entities in Salesforce, someone some entities are standard that goes out of the box from Salesforce and other entities are custom that you added for your business needs. And to avoid naming convention, they invented this uh, funny suffix underscore underscore C. And if you create an object or field uh, in database, they add you this suffix to avoid name, naming conflicts. Uh, in 2004, they found that not everything can be done with declarative tools and some logic and some actions, integrations are really complex and you, we need programming, we need uh, code. So they created Apex in 2004. And the first idea was just to store it in database, that's like unique class name and class uh, body uh, in separate column. And every class should be unique uh, in scope of org. And in 2006, they found that some solutions can be reusable and transferred from one uh, project to another project and to avoid any hacks they created app exchange and also that's kind of part of revenue from of salesforce that's literally first enterprise market in the world and here where they invented namespaces to avoid again naming um, conflicts so uh, namespace in salesforce is global in scope of all salesforce so doesn't exist uh, any type of packages that has same namespace comparing to other technologies somewhere it's still possible okay uh, let's move on let's talk a little bit about Apex. Apex is based on Java. Uh, when they launched this, they hired best stars and unicorns from over the globe to create this Apex, and they did really awesome job. It's stable, works great. Uh, they stole some tricks from C Sharp, for example, this. Oh, sorry, uh, for example, this uh, get set. Uh, properties. Uh, I have experiences a lot, a lot of technologies like C-sharp, PPF, Kotlin, Java, different frameworks. 
And what I would like to say is that literally ORM in Salesforce is one of the best. It works amazing. Um, constructions are simple, readable, and understandable. That's kudo, kudo to Salesforce uh, of that time. And till now, it's really, really great. Um, but comparing to Java and C Sharp, we have kind of embedded tools uh, for access validations. Um, for example, if you have an access to this field, if you have an access to this object, if you have an access to this record, all such stuff is just native functions in Salesforce and you don't, he don't need any kind of lib libraries or Googling how to read it or invent it every time that is kind of familiar for custom dev projects, right? Now we have built-in tools for integrations and unit testings. And actually, we were pioneers of test-driven development and you were not able, uh, like from very beginning, to deploy any code that has less than 75% coverage of unit testing. Uh, also, we have built-in tools for REST and SOAP services, like for boost, put, was get, don't need to Google, select library, everything is already in place. A uh, little bit tricky and uh, not typical uh, approach for asynchronous operations, but at the same time, it's really safe. We don't have any uh, race condition issues for asynchronous operations, just because of how it is done. Uh, comparing to Java, Apex has no primitives. Everything is object. So what does it mean? It means that Boolean uh, has three values instead of two, uh, true, false, and null. Uh, great stuff that was added in uh, last, oh, I can, can see my mouse. Okay, now, now you can see it. Uh, in, um, Latest release, they added uh, similar to Kotlin uh, no check um, operator. I, I still want uh, to have a kind of Elvis operator that would make code even more readable and e easy easily uh, readable. And um, we have single implementation for collections. We don't have kind of tree set, uh, array set, anything like this. We have like list, map, and set, and that actual implementations uh, for these uh, collections. Questions? No questions. Okay, a little bit about, um, a little bit about OOP in Apex. Um, as you know, if you define class in Java like final, you cannot extend it. So by default, all our classes in Apex are final. Uh, so uh, you need uh, to declare class rather abstract or virtual in order to make it inherit inheritable. Um, and about access modifiers a little bit. By default, it's private. If you didn't specify any kind of access modifier, uh, protect it, it's same as in Java and C Sharp, but public, it's not really public. Uh, it's kind of uh, visible in same application or namespace. And if you want to provide an access to some functions, classes, uh, outside, outside of your package, they should be declared as global. Um, yeah, and one uh, important uh, thing uh, that static variables um, works different than in Java or C Sharp or Python. Uh, they proceed within context of single transaction and you if you uh, have, for example, button that 
populates some value on static variable, it will literally populate it every time when you click this button. Let's imagine that uh, just do not go too deep in details. You press button, you throw some actions, that like kind of one execution. So static variables lives only one, uh, per, for one execution, one transaction. Okay, I can see my mouse. What is going on? Sorry, something wrong. Okay. Seems I won't be able to annotate it like re really clear. Okay, some example uh, with Apex class. As you can see, it's really simple, similar to all standard uh, languages. We have annotations, oh, we have methods, uh, constructions are really similar, uh, but but uh, as you can see on the top, we have tricky word like we sharing, or it can be also without sharing, and a few more versions, but don't want to go this way too deep. Uh, what does it mean? What does it mean? That means that all SQL queries, uh, like we can see here, It's SQL query, right? Similar to SQL query, uh, can be uh, can control what actual records you can see. Like in Salesforce, we have few levels of security access, and one of two main paradigms that you specify object level access and also record level access. So if we have such type of expression like this sharing, it means that this SQL query will return only records that are visible to user that uh, executes this method. Uh, yeah, concatenation, array. Uh, also we have specific type like ID and that sounds a little bit strange, but that's, uh, uh, child class for string. Uh, that's the way, by the way, how we can access uh, database uh, models. Uh, as you can see this underscore underscore C here. It means that it's like you can insert, query, delete, date these records. Um, guys, any questions? No questions. Yeah, uh, from the very beginning, uh, their idea was that everything is in cloud, so development should be also in cloud. And they invented this uh, interface to work with register of Apex code. Uh, you still can use it just to check actually what version of code is on this org, but um, that's not like, best solution right to work in browser with code and after they did this register of apex classes they invented so-called developers console that's probably first in the world um web id where you have pretty old tool set uh, that is was needed uh, for work with code just keep keep in mind that's like it's year 2006, 2007, Git was not even invented and every project uh, had different, um, different approach for development, different approach for deployment, different approach for testing. And uh, it wasn't like um, Single, single idea as today with CI, CD and feature branching in Git. Uh, today's ID, um, basically you can use 
any favorite editor that you like and use Terminal. Uh, officially, they signed a contract with Microsoft and uh, they, they force uh, Visual Studio Code as uh, official tool. But also you can use an uh, IntelliJ IDEA with this plugin. So it's actually a matter of taste to what kind of tool you will be using for development. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Salesforce Object Query Language, so-called SOCL. It's really similar to SQL, but with um, few limitations and tricks uh, regarding joins. Um, here you can see an example of um, SOCL query. And here, uh, this expression means like left inner join uh, based on uh, owner field. So you work as a uh, with external entity just with adding dots and specify fields from for this external entity but is, is it possible to use uh, left join queries uh, explicitly here no no they just no. do not support such kind of um, expressions at all ah, so no joins no no joins yeah they, uh. they uh, forced to use orm and like for, for me, it was also not convenient for first time, but eventually it's cool, really. <laughs> so so we, we, we grab everything we need from one table uh, with uh, so-called uh, implicit joins and then just, uh, just, just, just create another, another cycle and another loop and uh, querying table for if we need and query table tables other tables uh, depending on on that uh, item that we we grab in in the arrays in previous uh, when we execute previous query right yeah something like that yeah yeah something like that yeah but um from um, thank you for question uh important stuff uh, regarding salesforce when we create kind of external key in Salesforce table, we always specify exact table uh, that we link this key. Uh, we cannot have like um, polymorphic relations when one table can be external key for a few tables. Uh, we definitely can this. We definitely can have such type of solutions in SOCL and even it kind of best sometimes. But in Salesforce, one field, external key, one table. Uh, so, so we need a lot of association, association tables, right? Yes, yes. If we need uh, like relations to multiple tables, then it means multiple fields. Oh, cool, cool. It it should be handy for <laughs> for for support. Uh, yeah, there, there is like re really advantages. That it's easier to maintain everything is like literally more clear. But uh, like when we have something really really advanced and complex, it might be an issue. Like, yeah, yeah, of course. But uh, but uh, complex and and advanced uh, solution in uh, in CRMs is is a is a major evil uh, like for sure we should be careful with any kind of solution yeah. when we want to add any kind of big data integration for salesforce or at least have really advanced expert in order to do it properly because it's same same situation like with hammer right yeah yeah if, if you know how to use hammer yeah that, <laughs> no. Everything is a nail. Okay, <laughs> thanks. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for question. Mm, I have a question. Uh, do they? Uh, I mean, do does Salesforce use SQL uh, database engine underneath, or no SQL as well? Um, 
On the very beginning, I know for sure that they were using Oracle uh, as main their database, uh, but that's kind of their secret. They don't share actual you know, details of the implementation. So uh, we have like whispers. So based on whispers, they switched to Postgres eventually from Oracle. And uh, also um, that's kind of basic Salesforce tables uh, that has a lot of logic like control of level, field level security, control object level security, control record level security. And that type of operations requires a lot of calculations. If we have million tables, 10,000 users, many roles, hierarchy, uh, sharing rules, everything complex, and it slows down performance. So for example, if we have kind of um, data that we should just store and query, uh, we have another table. I think, I think that they implemented this with uh, no SQL, maybe on Mongo or something like this. Uh, but again, they don't share details regarding this. And uh, one more, uh, like third type of uh, tables that we have uh, for storing events. I see. Thank you. Thank you for question. Uh, guys, any other questions? Okay, let's proceed. Uh, let me clear everything. Okay, except of SQL, Salesforce Object Query Language, we have also Salesforce Object Search Language. And it's absolutely not similar to uh, SQL. That's something kind of like Elasticsearch tool, if I may say so carefully built-in tool that we can search through all tables, uh, all fields, uh, or specific, all email fields, like just find me example at google.com in all email fields, find me all, all links to John, John Smith in name fields uh, through everywhere. That's powerful and that kind of help uh, an example where we use it uh, that um, who were working on big enterprise project know that main of main issue is data duplication merging etc so we create some kind of flow where we check uh, record on duplicates before we actually allow to create kind of customer name because it's it might be a real issue if we have three or four entities for same business entity, right? So that's an example where we used it. Field phone, field name, uh, website, and it goes through all table, check if we have anything similar, and only after that we allow to create such type of record. Just an example. Also, like built in. Okay. In why why I cannot move on? Sorry, technical issues. Okay, except of um, these amazing tools, we have our, our own data manipulation language. So um, I think nobody really write insert update expression in SQL. So usually you have to find some libraries that help you to do this. Uh, and in Salesforce, we have such tool built in and it's called data manipulation language. It's really, really, really simple. I will try to annotate a little bit. Maybe if it will be bigger here, right? We created some account tracker uh, with our ORM specified some fields and just give insert. Same, we get some record, updated some value. Uh, we have try catch exceptions, same like in Apex and just update. Pretty simple, pretty cool. 
for advanced users, uh, like I think uh, there is a question, how it knows what to update, right? Because if I just update something, it can't update everything, right? So a annotation works bad. So uh, as you can see here, uh, we have ID column. Every table in Salesforce has a standard ID column. And in order to perform an update, this field should be specified. So we cannot update record by name. We cannot update record by city. Uh, we can update records only by ID. Or if we have an integration with external system and we have special column that contains this external key from this external system, uh, this field should be indexed and marked as an external key, then we can perform kind of absurd operations when a system checks if we have records with such external key in table. And if we don't have, it just creates such record. And if we have such record, it will update it. Pretty cool, right? Do, do we have uh, multiple updates, massive updates here? Yeah, yeah, and actually that's the uh, best way to do it. And that's uh, so-called in Salesforce bulkified type of code. And you have update as many records at the time as possible. And do not update like records in the loop. Mm -hmm. Thank you for question. Okay. Let's move on. Triggers. Salesforce very, very, very common uh, tool is trigger. Uh, please do not be confused. Uh, everybody knows that usually database it's kind of bottleneck in huge systems. So it's more like entity events that are performed on uh, several level where actual code is executed before um, any type of manipulations. They invented it not really good, but uh, to eliminate these disadvantages, uh, Salesforce invented patterns. So just an idea how it looks like. I might annotate too. We, uh, sorry. We uh, define trigger, give it name, uh, on which object it performs and events. It can be before, after insert, before, after update, before, after delete, and before undelete. Don't remember, it can be after undelete. Uh, so for example, before record was inserted, we can validate it, uh, populate some values uh, and save uh, transactions to database, uh, perform some kind of API calls using async, asynchronous tools, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's move on. Sorry, again, my mouse disappeared and I cannot see where I am. Okay, let's move on. UI, that's kind of, uh, sh sh should sound cool for people that do not like pixel right, pixel left, change a color, change a font, everything like this. Uh, first of all, we have two interfaces, classic and lightning. Uh, like Salesforce was invented, as I said, more than 20 years ago and approaches that were uh, good 20 years ago, not good for today. Uh, why? Can you, can you, can you? I think it should have a picture. Uh, on the left side, you can see 
classic Salesforce interface. It was built on something similar. Uh, hold on, I remember the framework. GSF uh, or uh, outdated ISP.NET when we had the view state and everything is generated on server side. Probably you can have some tricky XML formatting attributes for standard buttons related list loops tables. And on the right hand side, we have modern new uh, so called lightning interface uh, where more logic is stored on client level. And as you can see, just more modern. Uh, okay, for work with user interface, we have declarative tools where you can drag and drop, click and point, and everything will work as a magic. Uh, So-called layouts, flexi page, and flows. And also we have programmatic, so um, so-called visual force that is outdated uh, uh, because of paradigm, Aura, and the latest Lightning web components. Let's talk a little bit more in detail about it. Um, so visual force, that was actual first that Salesforce offered to us as a programmatic tool. Uh, it has model view controller architecture. Um, usually controllers were really, really big. Uh, it had view state with data bindings. Um, again, HTML generated by, ser by server. And one of the biggest advantages, it was compatible with jQuery. And if we had a lot, a lot of custom, tricky, complex, heavily logic. Uh, jQuery was a really good choice. I was a fan of jQuery in 2010 when like, we didn't have really uh, a lot choice. That's how it looks like. We were able uh, to write, uh, write Visual Force code here. You type Control S, and this part of the page was refreshed, and you can see all changes. Also, here you were able to switch uh, from Visual Force page to controller, check your state, uh, add variables. So it wasn't so bad. <laughs> it uh, was really comfortable, like you write code and you see just in time. So, uh, like legacy, like like a legacy tool, pretty pretty good. Uh, again, I, my mouse disappeared. Sorry, so small delay. Okay, now my mouse is again here. Layouts. That's something that helps us a lot. For example, if we have simple table that shows fields with labels, and that's kind of really boring when you don't have any tricky, but you have 50 fields and you need to add one more. You have to go to your SQL query, add this field, Populate in model, go to layout, find the place where to put it, write the code, save it, push to git, uh, show it on code review, and deploy to other environments, right? For, so here we have real benefits. Uh, all these sections you can do just by drag and drop uh, fields from this section to any place here. It will generate everything automatically, so-called metadata. And then you can just proceed with deployments, uh, meeting, et cetera, et cetera. So it really saves time for simple use. That's an example uh, how eventually it will look like. Uh, let me annotate it. When we drag and drop field, you can 
put it somewhere here, that so-called detail sections. Um, in lightning, uh, lightning interface. But uh, that's not all. Also, we have a so-called flexi page that was added later than layouts. And the actually layouts uh, is kind of needed for backward compatibility. Uh, so, flexi page is a more modern uh, interface uh, designed for uh, component-based frameworks. So, like Aura or LWC or Lightning Web Components is component-based frameworks. You can just pick the component, drag it somewhere, put it, and everything will be fine. Uh, also, these flexi pages are designed like mobile ready solutions and if you for example want to add a link or uh, any simple stuff label uh, some text some simple buttons that just go uh, that just navigate you to another system uh, you don't have to write code you can just drag and drop uh, for example rich text area specify values that you need uh, to have here and move ahead, right? Also, except of such tools as FlexiPage and Layouts, um, possible um, to use declarative tools for so-called flows when we have uh, like data population, data manipulations through multiple screens and based on some values you should go to one screen or to another, and you don't have to use like pink comic sans font <laughs> or, or animation with cats. You can use flows and literally just drag and drop uh, any UI components to your uh, flow and navigate to screen to screen. That's not something that usually developers do. Um, that we have special people like admins, admins or uh, consultants that really know this interface and this tool set really good. And usually that's their part to draw. Okay, let's talk a little bit about Lightning. Lightning uh, framework. Uh, and Lightning Interface uh, was invented in 2012. Uh, at the time when first Angular was invented. Uh, even like before second Angular, it wasn't really good. Uh, it uh, till for that time it was kind of wow and re really cool stuff but technologies uh, grows really fast and uh, uh, new solutions came with such huge speed that today uh, after eight years uh, aura looks not so good on, in front of other uh, javascript frameworks uh, so it was built on open source uh, Aura framework, um, new paradigm when more we, we try to put as, as more as possible logic uh, for on client side to reduce uh, load to servers, component framework, even driven architecture. It is mobile ready and just because how it is designed, it has disadvantages. That's an example of Hello World, um, Hello World program component uh, on Aura. As you can see, greeting, V, v that means being into view component, right? You should de define some variables like attributes, give name, type, specify some default value. We have um, also kind of CSS framework for us, uh, similar to Bootstrap, but uh, 
uh, called Salesforce Lightning Design System. And controller for Hello World component. So far, so good. Any question, guys? No questions. Let's move on. Okay, a few years ago, they invented really, really fast and um, fast framework that eliminates these advantages of Aura. It's compatible with ECMAScript, um, custom elements, shadow DOM templates, slots, everything, uh, everything like to the latest work of uh, JavaScript uh, requirements uh, in 2020. So an example how uh, Hello World component looks here. It little bit less. And also, by the way, we have set of custom uh, standard icons. Uh, most of the time you wouldn't need Google it and store somewhere in order to use it. Salesforce gives like lightning guidance and you can use it as you want. Sorry, and controller. Uh, do we have uh, experts, JavaScript experts here? Yes, pretty close to kind of modern JavaScript frameworks. Uh -huh. So is it closer, uh, because like I had debates with uh, my colleagues, is it closer to React or is it closer oh. to something else? Uh, the main idea of React is that uh, everything is a code. So you have the layout implemented inside the code. And uh, in your example, as I can see, there is separate layout and separate uh, component code. So it's more like, uh, let's name it <laughs> some kind of Angular. Some kind of Angular, thank you, okay. Now I'm, I'm not familiar with React, I'm familiar with Angular, and uh, for me it looks like quite an Angular code, except that by default Angular has um, double brackets, uh, you know, like on the first um, picture, hello, greeting, uh, you have only one uh, mm -hmm. curly bracket, or how to call it, is a symbol. Yep. <laughs> Cool. Okay, now I will know it. Thank you. <laughs> but uh, the main idea would be to probably compare not uh, uh, syntax but performance, <laughs> because you know that's usually the uh, main cornerstone of the that's true UI frameworks at least. That's true. But they promised uh, like uh, that at least it's faster than Aura <laughs> than previous one. Okay, let's move on. Okay, let's talk a little bit about security in Salesforce. Uh, and that's kind of cool that uh, you have everything pre-built to control your security stuff. Uh, it helps pre-build tools for uh, controlling IP ranges, hours, uh, sessions, uh, tokens, expirations tokens where session was originated, uh, access, you know, control to objects, control to fields, control to records, um, and a, a lot, a lot of more uh, like network uh, control and database access control that on the side of Salesforce support. Okay, object security, that's pretty, common, I think, you can read, create, edit, delete. But with one difference, if you have read, create, edit, delete access and um, your object uh, is so-called private object, you go to this table and you see nothing. Nothing except records that you created by your own. Uh, that's a picture that describe this. On the very bottom, fundamental settings called organization-wide defaults. Uh, it can 
be um, specified for table uh, like public, uh, public read, public read write, yes. and private, <laughs> and also. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Come on. Okay. Uh, uh, we have uh, again the public read, public read write, and private access to objects and so called controlled by parent. That's like a little bit tricky, so let's omit it uh, for now. Uh, what does it mean, public read? If you have read access to entity, it means that you can see every record in this table, but it, uh, you will have access to modify on the records that was rather shared with you manually or shared with you by some kind of logic. For example, um, healthcare domain, let's imagine that I'm a medical representative and I work in kind of globe company that sells pills through all the world. And it's important to protect um, data of doctors from um, as, as much as possible, right? There is no reason for a medical representative in Ukraine to see data of doctors in USA, right? But actually it's the same table, table right? Contacts. And here we should specify that, for example, if country is Ukraine, then this record will be shared with employees that are in Ukraine. And other records they won't be able to see. That is controlled by so-called uh, role hierarchy. Uh, role hi hi hierarchy uh, is based on, uh, uh, let's see, tree where guys on the top will see records uh, will see records that are visible for guys on the bottom and like cas cascade view it's say if uh, something is visible to western sales rep it also will be visible for ceo or executive staff and their managers but if something is visible only for ceo some record was created by ceo uh, it will be visible for uh, let's say lower level employees only uh, because of uh, some sharing rules or manual sharing. Mm. Yeah, that's basically all. 